Hi, I'm Courtney Reimer. I'm an editor here at Audible and super excited to have a conversation today with uh, an author of a book um, who about people have said is actually literally life changing. Um, hi, Liz Josephsberg. Welcome to Audible. Hi. I'm, uh, I'm going to apologize up front for my sexy voice. I uh, have a little laryngitis going on, but uh, that won't get in the way of our conversation. No, it's fine. As long as you're audible, it That's works. That's right. Hey. <laughs> um, so you're a your self-care expert, and your book, um, Target 100, is all the rage um, among my friends who have a hard Thank time you. finding uh, a balance between health, sleep, self-care, fitness, um, me time, um, and you know, I think we all can relate to having a hard time. I know you have too, uh, finding that balance. Um, and I think your book does a good job of explaining that. Today we're going to hear from fans who already know you and listeners who are coming to this for the first time. Um, so we'll take some of their questions on Facebook. Um, and everyone, feel free to add yours to the mix um, by commenting on Facebook. So um, talk to me a little bit about self-care and the importance of self-care and self-development, whatever self-help it's being called these days, um, and what it means to you. Well, for me, self-care is really understanding almost how to put yourself first in a world that's always asking you to put other people first. And what I'm finding is people really don't know how to do it anymore. And to really find that time, and that's what Target 100 is. It's a, it's a, it's a manual for teaching you how to change your habits in different pillars that really put you in the front seat of your own life. And, you know, we, we led with weight loss, I think, because I've been in the weight loss industry for so many years. But what I really saw Target 100 as and wanted it to be was a manual for self-care. I, I kept saying to the publisher, I want it to be the joy of cooking for wellness, right? That if you had a daughter or a son that was struggling with stress and, 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 and overworked and didn't know how to get healthy, that you would... As a parent, you'd be like, gosh, I got to give this book. It makes so much sense and it's science based and it do it's not crazy. It's not telling you that you're going to, you know, lose 50 pounds in three weeks. And, you know, it's really just about training you to change your life and your habits. Real lifestyle. Yeah. The whole, whole thing. Um, stepping back a little bit about you, um, you mentioned you've been in the uh, weight loss industry for a long time and you have some big names that you've worked with. Uh, tell me a little bit about your background and sort of how that came to Target 100. Sure. Um, I struggled with my weight from the time I was a child. So um, I ended up really um, trying every single diet that you've ever heard of. Um, I then ended up um, working at Weight Watchers for 11 years and became there. Uh, I started as, as a member. I had weight to lose and I went there and I lost it and I worked my way up from the ground level from a receptionist who weighed in thousands of people a week all the way up to um, I guess my last title was the Director of Brand Advocacy and the National Spokesperson. So um, in those years I I was what you'd call the black ops, like secret leader who helped celebrities lose weight. So it was my job to help Jennifer Hudson and, and Jessica Simpson, Charles Barkley, Katie Couric. Um, it was additionally my job to, you know, act as that national spokesperson. But most importantly, I think, I was one of the people behind the scenes in program development. So I was working with the science team behind the glass to bring people in, test programs, and then I always say this word, zhuzh, zhuzh them so that they worked better and really listened to the feedback. So I, I was very involved in developing the weight loss programs at Weight Watchers. Um, after I left there, um, my real goal, I love Weight Watchers to this day, um, but I really had become, everyone kept saying, you're a Weight Watchers expert. And I wanted to become a weight loss industry expert because I had seen so much of one perspective. So I jumped off there and started my own company and literally started working anywhere that would take me to, to hear about not just weight loss anymore, but wellness. I became certified as a personal trainer because I saw a huge hole in that people were talking about one thing 
but they weren't trained in both things. So if I could talk about both nutrition and exercise, I would be kind of a solo voice. Um, so I, I, I did go back to school. I worked at Lifetime Fitness. I worked in wearable technology, you name it. And all of that background was what I put into Target 100 on top of struggling with my own weight my whole life and losing 65 pounds myself and working every day to keep that off. I wanted to kind of pull the curtain back and say, listen guys, this is what's really happening in the weight loss industry. Here's the truth that this is a brain game more than it is about you needing a meal plan. This is a brain game and I'm gonna teach you how to win it. And talk to me a little bit about how maybe the advice, I, I think people hear things like, Jessica Simpson and Jennifer Hudson, and they kind of want, people love hearing about celebrities. Sure. And I want to know some of the things you taught them that you think helped them, but also normal people like you and me could apply to our own lives. Absolutely. I, I think my main goal was, and, I, and if you look at these people, these clients, my, the one piece of pride is they have not gained their weight back, right? Um, I really worked with them to learn how to indulge correctly. I think that's, that's one of the biggest issues. And, and there's so much research in the book about how difficult this is based on the way that foods are manufactured at this point and you know, really setting up an environment for success. And it was my job to actually fly to them weekly. So I went in their homes, I saw what was going on. I created groups around them so that, you know, Jennifer Hudson, we had 75 of her family members on the program at the same time. We lost, we lost 2,000 pounds. We ended up on Oprah. You know, it was one of those things that for Jennifer, two things. Understanding that you can eat what you love if you learn to manage it correctly. And number two, surrounding her with supportive people so that when she did go, they're very close family. So when they did go to a family event, there wasn't all of this, you know, uh, sabotage going on. Instead, they were working together and they were so excited that some of their events turned into like red carpet events where instead of where they used to eat, they were all get, buying dresses and showing off their new bodies. And um, same thing with Jessica. Every week, 15, 16 people, Casey Cobb, her mom, all the people you would know in that room, they needed to learn that they could still enjoy wine, they could still party together, they're young girls, you know? Like, this is, you know, so understanding that it's not the end of your life, but knowing how to manage and managing it for the long term and not making it about just food. And I think that's, that's a real mistake that people make. Um, understanding that if you don't start to understand that stress and sleep and hydration and all of these other factors are just as important as what you eat, then you're going to probably keep failing. That, that was what I was going to ask you about next, sort of what Target 100 is and how it does incorporate the other things you talked about, sleep, water, meditation or mindfulness. Yeah. Um, can you speak to specifically Target 100 and what that means? Yeah. So, um, you know, having struggled with weight my whole life um, and done literally every diet. My nickname is the diet guinea pig because to this day I go, I work for companies, I consult all across the world now. I work for them and I will actually gain 10 or 15 pounds and then lose it on whatever system or device or, you know, whatever it is that, that we're doing. Um, so uh, I saw that there was such a rigidity and there was such a perfectionism in the weight loss industry. And when I work with you know clients, um, they're really struggling because if they go one point over their Weight Watchers allowance or one calorie past where they're supposed to go, they were just really, it was like such a mind game. They thought they'd broken something, it wasn't, they couldn't fix it, so they may as well just eat everything that wasn't nailed down. Now, I had done that so much that I created Target 100 after playing archery with my kids. Mm. I had this great experience of realizing that we were all aiming at the bullseye, but none of us were hitting it. But we were still getting points. So I thought, what if I could bring that essence into weight loss and wellness, that you don't have to be perfect. If you will aim for something, it's better than not trying at all, right? So it's not an inner and outer, a black and a white. 
which is what I was seeing all over the industry for so many years and including myself. So Target 100, um, I also realized the diet industry, the wellness industry is so focused on food and exercise. And honestly, that's just not it. So I added these other pillars, one being movement. So I've separated movement from exercise because just getting up and moving your body is what we're meant to do and helping people understand that. Uh, hydration, so over 100 ounces of water a day, you're aiming for 100 ounces of water, 100 uh, minutes of exercise, 100 minutes of movement, 100 grams of carbs in a day, and 100 extra minutes of sleep, and 100 minutes of stress-relieving exercise like meditation. Because people don't understand that their stress they're, they've created a habit that if they feel stress, they put food in. Food does calm the stress that they're feeling. There's serotonin released by that food. So I try to teach them how to begin to replace food with stress relieving exercises and techniques. Let's talk about the water. We have to talk about the yeah. water because that's the thing that all of the people I know who are using it, they're like, wow, I had no idea how much uh, water that is. Like, how, how much is a hundred? It's a hundred grand, hundred ounces. ounces. How yeah. much is that? It's a lot. It's a lot when you consider that our America, 75% of you are walking around critically dehydrated, like not a little bit, but critically. And when you are critically dehydrated, you have no energy. You are, you know, prone to overeat. Um, it affects absolutely every system in your body. We are, you know, 60 odd percent water. Our brain and our heart are 78%. So I'm trying to push you. I always say this, if there's nothing you, you know, if you don't buy the book and you don't, you know, um, do anything, if you just leave this conversation and try to start drinking extra water, it's life changing. And that's why I think it's been so impactful for people is so energy, mood, hair, skin, nails. And it's, it's mind blowing how just getting your system up to where it wants to be is so critical. And we have water available, but we just don't drink it these days. Yeah. We're so busy. We're so, we're in a car, we're doing this, we're working. We, we forget to do it. So a hundred ounces looks like I'm trying to think of a great, I wish I had my visuals. Like I usually, cups, like yeah. So I'm going to guess this is maybe 15 ounces. That's, that's a good, tw not quite 20. So you'd have so to do five, five of, of those All in right. a day. All yeah. Right. Yeah. I could maybe do that. Huh. Um, okay. So just a reminder, people, if you have questions, I know, um, there are people on the feed who are doing target 100. If you have any questions about tips or just in general about how to change your lifestyle, um, talk to me a little bit. You, we were talking before about recording the book. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, of course I am biased and I've recommended the audio book to yes. everyone. Um, tell me what it was like, like recording the book and, and what you think the audio experience has to offer. I loved recording the book and thank God I didn't have laryngitis like I do today. <laughs> but, um, so I don't sound like this on the audio book. I promise I don't sound like Marge Simpson. Um, but, uh, <laughs> It was a real fun for me because prior to being in weight loss, I was a professional actress. So this was like like getting to see my two worlds come together in such a like mind blowing way. I couldn't believe it. Um, wow, it takes stamina, and wow, it's a different, it's a totally different animal. Um, but reading your own book, especially when when you guys read it, uh, when you listen to it, you're gonna hear. Um, in both in both mediums, you're going to hear the passion that I have, and I hope you'll hear it today. I love what I do, and I want to help people so badly. So getting to emphasize and massage the words that I really that I had written myself for very specific reasons was so exciting to me, and to think that someone would be listening to me because it comes all from my heart, and so that was that was amazing. Um, I was sort of chatting with you earlier saying it's been so neat to see how people love the, the audiobook is, you know, really the ability to, to listen to this. I think this book in particular, um, it's a, it's a thought provoking book. Uh, 
it, it's meant to prov provoke you to think about the way you've done things in the past and what hasn't worked for you. And I think in listening to something like this, you have this unique ability to be able to be reflecting at the same time that you're listening in a way that when you read the book, you don't have that ability, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know for my own self, I will put on an audiobook in, in so many different situations, right? Sometimes I'm cleaning a house, some in my house, not just any house. Um, and <laughs> Come to my house. I, I know, right? <laughs> so, um, and, and I just find myself kind of floating outside of what I'm hearing and imagining. And I think that's a great piece of this. Um, the book itself has a lot of worksheets and um, recipes and things, tools and, and tricks and things that I've developed over 15 years of doing this, that, um, that after you listen to the book, I want you to kind of go back in, download the P PDF of these worksheets and tools and kind of re-listen yep. and do the worksheets as, because as I say, this is for you. Target 100 was my answer to what I see going on in the wellness space, which is there's a lot of prescription saying, oh, here, you know, you can only eat these foods. It's for this many days. You'll lose X number of pounds. And you don't even like those foods, right? You're like, I don't like kale. I don't like quinoa. I don't even know how to make it. But you're, you're, you're so determined that you're just going to go do it and you're going to eat it for whatever amount of days. I was like, no more people. This does not make sense. So there are worksheets in here where I help you develop your own program, right? I teach you to create your own meal plan. You know, it's, it's so simple and I don't want people following other people. I don't, I don't even want you following me. You know, I want you to take this book and, and I'm getting these pictures on social media. And if anyone has one, please send it in. Um, cause this, you know, it's all about ripping this thing apart and, and using those pages and those worksheet pages and writing on them and, and creating your plan because we've all been just listening to someone else and following what works for them or for that company, not knowing if it means anything to us. Yeah. So I want you really creating your own. So I've given you loose pillars. Yep. These are very loose pillars. This is not like if you hit 101 ounces of water, you're bad and you need to start over. Right. No, right. no. It's all like archery. If you got 88 this day, 102 that day, you're fine. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And just reiterating, of course, um, when you get the audio book, you can download the, you get meal plans. Yes, you can create oh, your own, yeah. but you also give some helpful guide points as well. So yeah. download those PDFs. Um, what is the like most common thing you hear from people when they're starting Target 100 and, and maybe some of the most common challenges or things that are surprising to them? Because everyone, um, is so focused on food in the weight loss world. I started with food and I, and I talk very openly about it in the book. Um, I wouldn't have, but I knew no one would read my book because they're so conditioned to just go food focus. And when I say a hundred grams of carbs in a day, people really, I think the biggest challenge is number one, that it isn't a steadfast. Like I said, if you go to 110, you, nothing happens. If you go to 90, nothing happens. Um, that it's thinking about that, that archery. Um, I, I think people get real hung up and they want to be like, no, Liz, tell me exactly what to do. And I'm like, no, that's the point. And this is fluid and this is a lifestyle. Um, so they often ask me, what does a day of a hundred grams of carbs look like? I think that could be helpful to like somebody listening. Yep. 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 And I always say, um, it, it looks like this. If you decided to have oatmeal in the morning, which is a little bit higher carb breakfast, you probably won't have rice with dinner, but that's about it. Yep. Right. We're not a low carb. It's not a low carb. It's a lower carb diet. Also, I'm just counting carbs for one reason and there are, well, two reasons. When I was working behind the glass at all these companies, everyone in those rooms would say, I was always the moderator and I'd come in and teach the plan. So I was like the friendly face and I'd come in and say, Liz, why can't they make this easier? Why do I have to count eight numbers to subtract four to run around the block two times minus my body weight? And I was like, oh my God, you just want this to be simple. Mm -hmm. So target 100 is simple. 100 grams of carbs around there each day 
Number one, it'll push you towards whole natural foods because you can't eat stuff in packages because it's all bumped up with sugar. So it's going to Sugar is a carb, so the sugars live under the carbs. You don't have to minus fiber. You don't have to do the whole net carbs thing. What I saw over time was nobody was following these weight loss programs as written anyway. They weren't counting every calorie or logging every point. They weren't doing it. So if I could get them to understand, you know, there's one worksheet in the book that I think blows people's minds. It's called the 555 worksheet, and you just – you sit down 20 minutes and you write out five breakfasts that work for you, for you, not for me. Yep. You know, I happen to love yogurt with berries and some sliced almonds. That's a really great breakfast, maybe 25 grams of carbs. So it's very simple, but I need you to be doing that discovery part and not getting locked into, um, that's it. That's locked in diet mentality of like, I have to do everything right. Um, and, and be perfect. That's not the way any of any of the people that I've ever have been successful. And you look at the celebrities, same thing. They are indulging, they're enjoying their lives, but on a Monday night, you know, when they have to work in the morning, they're not having three glasses of wine and going to the pantry. So learning where those things live is super important. Okay, that was that's perfect segue into uh, one more question I I have for you before yeah. we get into some fan questions, which is, I, I was really interested by the visual cues you you talk about and how people can kind of work with those and change them in order to change their habits. I really like the mental aspect of that. If you can get yeah. into that, yeah. Well, and forgive me, I, I'm thinking of two different things. Yeah. Did you mean when people see food, they're driven to eat it? Well, there's there's two. Yeah. There's there was one about you know if you always walk in the back door and that's right yes. into your kitchen how so Habits. i don't know if that's yeah. yeah yeah so i'll hit them i'll hit them both yeah. so um again target 100 is a manual for habit change and people very so uh, they very often misunderstand habits we actually are so habitual that 50 percent of what we do in a day is just habit and habit lives in this sort of back area of the brain where we don't think so 50% of your food choices end up just being habitual and they end up being habitual patterns. So what I'm trying to help you understand is you're not broken. Nothing's wrong with you it's that you keep failing and getting that donut at the donut cart in the morning, but let's unravel your habits because you're probably waking up too late, hitting the snooze three times getting up, having no time to make a breakfast or bring a breakfast or even stop somewhere to get a little healthy breakfast. And you're getting here, you're walking in late, the boss gives you a dirty look, stress goes through, through, the, through the roof, and all of a sudden you're like, I need a donut. If you do that two or three times, you've created a habit. And your brain stops having it up here in the frontal cortex where you're decision making and starts putting it back here where shave and haircut, two bits. This is how I'm living now. I'm getting up late every morning. I'm grabbing something. Um, so we're very cued by what we see, smell, hear, and talk about. So um, another piece of this is understanding that you have a secondary hunger system, that every time you guys are cued by a commercial on TV or driving by a billboard or um, even what's so scary now, walking into even a clothing store where they sell candy at the checkout, right? This is real big now because they're making more, more money off of you guys because they know you're triggered. When you go to you know one of these clothing stores and you have to walk through a maze of candy, what we now know is every time that you see food, smell food, or even talk about food, so I could say like ooey gooey chocolate chip cookie warm out of the oven. I'm guessing most of us are reacting. I feel it right here. <laughs> right there. My mouth starts watering. This was a really important system when we had no food. When we were out on the plane, we saw a woolly mammoth. We had to eat the woolly mammoth, so we had to eat it all, right? We didn't have a refrigerator to put it in. So we have this. And the way you'll understand it now is if you go to um, – a restaurant and you eat a huge meal and you're totally full and then they bring the dessert cart around and you're like, no, I couldn't. And then you see it. They know what they're doing. Yep. You immediately can because we have a secondary hunger system that reacts exactly the way the first 
system does. Mouth-watering, stomach grumbling, desire to eat, even room in your stomach to eat more mm. because we needed to survive. What's happening now, I don't want to make you paranoid, but I need you to start <laughs> noticing, is that food manufacturers have our number and they're triggering us to eat everywhere. I mean, and there's...